Okay, we are going to take a look at the golden ratio, and we're going to construct it using only pencil, straight edge, and a compass. Now, this pencil's a little dull. Let me sharpen that bad Larry up. It's really important that we try to be as accurate as possible uh, when doing constructions. All of these marks that we're going to do are going to um, rely upon one another, so we want to be as accurately uh, constructing as we can so that this can be really close. Start by using your straight edge to just draw a line. Okay, uh, label one end of your line A and somewhere else, not so close to the end, you're going to need a little bit of this segment here as part of your construction, maybe right about there. Good enough. We'll label that point B. Uh, please note, I did not use a big, huge, dark circle as my dot. I have a tiny little sliver. Okay, we want to be as accurate as possible. The tiny little sliver, it's going to be really obvious where this little point goes to. But with this big dot, uh, I could move this by like a whole millimeter and still be within the big dot. So the big dots aren't as effective as these teeny little marks. Okay, so we have AB. All right. First, so you have AB. Open your compass and lock it to a distance that is clearly bigger than half of AB. That looks to be clearly bigger than half of AB. I'm just going to open a little bit more and lock that compass down. You're going to want to watch this entire video through before you do your construction at all so that you can get a sense of what the whole process looks like and also how much room you're going to need everywhere. Uh, we're going to swing an arc above and below this segment uh, with the pivot point at B and then another one with the pivot point at A, so that those two construction arcs intersect above and below. Next, take your straight edge and connect those two intersection points with your straight edge, and that will give us, as accurate as possible, that intersection will be uh, point M. Now that we've bisected AB, the next thing that we're going to want to do is construct a perpendicular segment perpendicular to AB that goes through point B. So we're going to want to close our compass, tighten that up, to a much smaller distance. It doesn't actually matter what this distance is. Uh, we just want it to be the same distance on the left and on the right of B on the segment AB. Please note, I only hold the pivot end at a time when I construct. It is very easy to move the distance if you hold the pivot and pencil. Even if you tighten it really, 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 really tight, it takes the tiniest little bit of effort to move it uh, if you grab both pencil and pivot end at the same time. So um, definitely, definitely uh, try not to move that by grabbing them both at the same time. Just grab the uh, pivot end while drawing. Oh no, I marked my paper again accidentally. Okay, once you have these two marks equidistant from B, we're going to open our compass a little bit. Doesn't really matter where, we just need to be consistent for the next two arcs that we're going to swing. Doesn't really matter what the distance is. We'll stick one pivot point at the intersection on the right. We'll swing an arc above B. Stick that pivot point at the intersection on the left and intersect that above B. Next, we will connect with our straight edge uh, between those two intersections and B.
and get as accurate as possible so that when I draw this, it will exactly go right through intersection and B. Uh, I'm going to allow for a little bit of error here, and I'll describe that at the end of the video, but just do your very best to be as accurate as possible. Okay, next, and this is maybe the hardest part of this whole construction. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we want to measure distance MB and set our compass to that distance so that the pivot point is at B, the pencil tip is exactly here at M. About like that. Tighten the compass. Sometimes it moves a little when you tighten it, so let me just double check. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going with that. All right, so once you have that distance, with your pivot point at B, intersect the perpendicular. And before you move your compass distance at all, take that same distance, put your pivot point now up here at that intersection, and swing an arc in this general area. Now, I went just a tiny bit beyond that line. If you're doing it perfectly, it'll end up exactly on that line. Once again, I'll allow for a little bit of tolerance here. Um, all right, we're very close to done now. So we have A, B, let's call this point up here C, and we are now going to want to connect C, the intersection here, with A, creating a right triangle. As accurately as possible, I will allow for a little bit of error show you how to calculate percent error at the end. Okay, uh, A, B, C, D, we need point D is going to be where that second one that I swung, uh, where that intersects the hypotenuse, that is D. Very close to done now, friends. We're now going to open our compass to distance A, D. There. Lock it into place. Double check that it didn't move at all while locking it into place. It's just a little bit bigger than I want it to be, and I just closed it by a ton by comparison. So that looks. About good. So hard to get so precise, which is why I'm going to allow a little bit of wiggle room here. All right, I'm going with that. Um, now we intersect AB. We'll stick our pivot point at A with this distance. That's not AD at all. That's not good at all. So distance AD, pivot point on A, and intersect. And there it is. This guy right here is G. A. I'm going to darken the three of the main points here. B, uh, G and B. All right, guys. There is the golden ratio. Uh, the golden ratio is equal to a b divided by a g and we will uh, prove that very quickly off to the side here uh, I will this one doesn't have to be accurate because this is just a quick little sketch here's a here's g here's b Call this one unit. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, here's D. It's one unit. Let me call from D to C as X. So then from C to B is also X, and AB is 2X. And we're going to show that 2X is really equal to the golden ratio, uh, as I mentioned down here. So using this right triangle and the Pythagorean theorem, we get 1 plus X quantity squared, the hypotenuse, should equal X squared plus 2X squared, the sum of the squares of the two legs. Uh, I do have to foil this out. Uh, it's another name for binomial distribution. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times x is x. x times 1 is another x. x times x is x squared. On the other side of the equation, we have x squared plus 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Let me combine my like terms here now. 1 plus 2x plus x squared equals 5x squared. We'll move everything over to that side of the equation, and I get 0 equals 4x squared um, minus 2x minus 1. I will use the quadratic formula that you don't have to worry about so much right now, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a, C, where just the coefficients of this equation are the A value is the coefficient for the squared term, the B value is the coefficient for the non-squared term, and the C value is the number without the variable here at the end. Uh, and all of that is over, of course, 2A, of course, as if you know this formula already. Uh, simplifying that, cleaning that up, we get uh, 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 16 all over 8, which is 2 plus or minus square root of 20 over 8. Now, two things. Uh, square root of 20 is really just the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, so that's 2 root 5, and then also... Uh, distance is always positive, so I don't really care about this negative. We'll just look at the positive version. So I'm really looking at 2 plus 2 root 5 all over 8. And you can factor a 2 out of all of this mess. And uh, that is your value of... Um, that's your value of x. Now, 2x uh, should equal phi, so if I have uh, 2x equals phi, and I want to get phi, and this is, once again, my x value, I'll just multiply this guy by 2. 2 times 1 plus root 5 over 4, and that cancels, and I get phi to equal 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Now, this is just the algebra to prove that this construction actually works. Let us anecdotally check if it works by taking our ruler. I want to be as accurate as possible, and we'll talk about um, we'll talk about percent error here in a second. What is an acceptable range here? I understand that these construction tools are only so accurate, so let's take a look. My lights in my classroom just turned off and then back on again. I guess I wasn't moving around enough. Okay. So uh, in centimeters or if we use, let's actually use each one of these individual guys. So we'll actually do this in millimeters. Uh, AG is, what is that, like one below? Mm. Let me be super accurate here. I am going to call that, it looks to be about 1 below 9, yeah, yeah, so uh, 89 millimeters uh, for AG, and then AB, the whole thing, let me just double check, yeah, 89 is good for that, 
Uh, ooh, hey, that almost is 145 millimeters. It's like exactly between 14 and 15 centimeters. It's 145 millimeters. And now the moment of truth, friends. The moment of truth. How close did we come? Uh, how close did we come to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2? It should be, like, really close, but... Sometimes it's not. 145 divided by 89 is... All right. That's not as good as I'd hoped, but we will see uh, if it is acceptable in just one quick second. So to uh, three decimal places of accuracy, that is 1.629. Now, phi... 1 plus root 5 over 2, if you remember, is approximately equal to three decimal places of accuracy, 1.618. And uh, the last thing that I'm going to ask you to do, you don't have to, by the way, do this. You just need to do this picture and this measurement. This is just me showing you algebraically why this construction works. Um, okay, so here's how we're going to do percent error, and then we'll call it a video. So percent error is going to equal uh, your value minus phi divided by phi uh, times 100. We can use these decimals. This is going to be close enough. I'm hoping that this will be within 1% uh, error. Um, so I'm going to take my value, 1.629 minus 1.618. Yep. Now we're going to take that and divide by 1.618. And then we are going to multiply that by 100. And yes, sweet deal, I was less than 1. Um, of all the ones that I've done practicing for this. This is the most inaccurate one that I've got so far, but it's still less than 1% error. Um, so my percent error is 0 0.68. We'll go to two, per, two decimal places. But if this is less than 1%, that's what we're looking for. Um, I will... I think I'll accept as much as 2% error. Certainly if you're less than 1% error, that, that's really good. I don't expect these to be perfect because this equipment is only so perfect. Okay, that is the golden ratio constructed using compass pencil. Straight edge. We'll continue this in some other video. You want to see the golden rectangle? We'll continue on uh, soon.